Hey everyone, in this video we are going to study the lung disorder. Similar to the discussion of the, the heart disorder, we are also going to have a quick revision of the lung's function. Firstly, the orifice of the lung is the nose. That's why from the lung disorder, there will be many manifestations that links to the nose. The lung also considered as florid canopy. In other words, also considered as fragile organs. That's why the exogenous pathogens are very e easily to attack the lung because the, the lung stay on the top to protect the human body. The lung is also fragile. That's why it is very easy to be attacked. To be attacked. The function of the lung, the lung governs the qi. The qi refers to the qi in the body, governs the, the dispersing and descending. This dispersing and descending can be the qi and can be the water. The lung links to the all vessels. That's why we can diagnose. Also, this lung refers to can refers to the lung meridian. That's why we can use Chunko area to indicate to indicate all organs problem. That's because the lung links to all vessels. The lung governs the regulation of qi, blood and body fluid. So because of these functions, the lung's disorder Will relate to will will relate to the nose. Also, will relate to the qi. What happens if the qi have problems or the qi movements have problems? Most typical, common symptoms is cough or difficult breathing. So that's the disorder of qi due to the lung's function. Some also can present with a skin problem, nasal mucus from the nose. So that's all because of the lung's function. The first one is the, the lung qi deficiency. Very similar to the heart qi deficiency. When you see a syndrome, you're going to separate. You're going to separate the organ and the nature of the disease. C deficiency. Then you're going to find the manifestations from the signs and symptoms. Which one can present with C deficiency? Shallow breathing. Reluctance to talk. A soft voice, general fatigue, pale compression, spontaneous sweating. So these are quite similar to the heart qi deficiency and very similar to the qi deficiency because these manifestations are the manifestations of the qi condition, qi deficiency condition. And because of this is a lung, a lung disorder, the patient will be coughing or panting. Because of the deficiency, qi deficiency, so the cough will not be very loud. That's why it's a, a weak coughing. The patient can present with weak coughing and weak panting. The patient also may be wind intolerance or very easy to get common colds or common flus. So this is the situation in clinics. If a patient got a very poor immune system, they got flu or got colds very easily, we will diagnose as a lung qi deficiency. Or we also diagnose as a lung and spleen qi deficiency. The reason is because qi, the lung, 
links to the skin of the body. And qi deficiency will result in the defensive qi, which also the one to protect our body, the defensive qi deficiency. That's why the patient will present with a poor immune system. That's why they are more likely to have common colds. So the common manifestations, coughing, panting, some clear flame, also this coughing is soft, weak. Very easy to have common cold, spontaneous sweating. That's from the that's from the qi deficiency. Qi deficiency. Lung indeficiency. The lung indeficiency, the patient will present with indeficiency. So for indeficiency, we have mentioned quite a few times. Now you should remember what's the manifestations of a, of an indeficiency syndrome. The feverish feeling, tidal fever, feverish sensation, nice sweat, flushed cheek, a dry mouth, a throat, a hoarse voice. That's because indeficiency will result in deficiency heat. That's why you have dry mouth and throat. Unproductive cough, which means the patient will have a flan, but the flan is not a lot. So, scanty, sticky flan, the reason is indeficiency, have deficiency heat. Firstly, on indeficiency, the body will have less fluid, that's why it won't be perfumed flan. It will present as scanty flame. The second is the defic indeficiency will have deficiency heat. The deficiency heat will consume the fluid, so you will make the indeficiency worse. That's why also scanty flame. And indeficiency symptoms. So this, this coughing and the lung qi deficiency coughing is very different. This can present as dry cough. The lung qi deficiency we more focus, focus on the sound. So we said it's very weak cough. The wind cold attacking the lung. The wind cold attacking the lung is from the exogenous pathogens. So from this some from this syndrome from the, the terms of the the name of this syndrome we will know the cause this patient presents the cause is the wind and the cold so the patient will present with white tongue coating some white coating superficial that's because this is an Exterior syndrome, nasal discharge, clear nasal discharge, that's because of the cold. White flan, the color, so the patient may present with coughing and panting. The patient may present with fever, nasal obstruction or nasal discharge. So this wind cold attacking the lung, in the clinics, we can see, especially when patient got a common cold, it's one of the one of the symptom of common cold is the wind cold attacking the lung. A patient may present with chills, fever, nasal obstruction, clear nasal discharge, charge, headache, body ache, and no sound with cough or without cough. That's an exterior wind cold syndrome. So that's from the exogenous pathogens. Since we know that in 
the pathogens may be wind cold. You also may be wind heat. With wind, with wind, the wind heat, the manifestation is very similar. It also can be the common cold. The only difference is from the heat. From the heat, the nasal discharge, the turbid, means the means the sticky. So the discharge will be sticky. The patient will have a dry mouth. Thirsty or sore. Red tip is from the heat. Some yellow coating. Superficial, that's because also exterior syndrome. So the key manifestation of wind heat attacking the lung. Cough. Yellow flame. Thick or sticky. Thick or sticky yellow flame. And wind heat. Exterior syndrome. So now you can go you can go back to the A principles in an exterior syndrome, what kinds of manifestations? The dryness attacking the lung. The dryness refers to uh, in the in the in the patient in the body there's not enough fluid to moist moist um, the, the body so you present a dryness when it presents with dryness the most typical symptom is dry dry lips dry skin dry nose dry throat and exterior syndrome since the nose the mouth the tongue can be dry the flame won't be a lot. That's also because the flame is kind of fluid, although the fluid is the one we don't need. So that's why scanty, sticky. The patient also may be may present with dry cough, and the the cough can have flame, but this flame is very difficult to cough out. The patient will tell you this. They can feel it, it is very difficult to cough out the phlegm That's from the dryness. So apart from the characteristics of the dryness, the patient also will present with the problem with the lung, such as cough, also panting. The fire, the lung, the lung heat. This, this syndrome is due to excess lung heat. Excess heat in the lung will disturb the dis dispersing and descending function of lung. This also can, can result in the cough, panting, hot breath. So when he breathes, they can feel the, the, the heat. There's one patient mentioned to me a few weeks ago. He's, that's, that's actually a COVID-19 patient. He recovered. He, he was one of the first patients in, a, in South Africa. And he recovered after two weeks. But he, came, but he came to me two weeks ago and he said, although the test was negative, but he still feel discomfort. He f how he feels, he says, he feels like breathing on fire. Breathing on fire. That's a hot breath. As you may have chest pain, red, sore, or, and swollen throat. As you may pre present with fever, constipation, that's also due to the heat. Scanty urine, yellow, scanty ur yellow urine, that's also from the lung heat, from the heat. 
So from this, this syndrome, the key points acute coughing and panting. Symptoms of interior access syndrome. So now you go back to the previous differentiation method. Access syndrome. Because of this syndrome, it's an excess syndrome, so the coughing is very different from the lung qi deficiency. This coughing will be acute and severe and loud and strong uh, or forceful. So this is, this is the diagnostic method from listening, from the sound of the coughing, you can identify the qi, the deficiency or excess syndrome that's from the, the sound of coughing. The flame heat accumulating in the lung, this only means that in the lung, you got the flame and heat. So in this syndrome, the patient will present with the lung problem that's the coughing with coughing or panting, but also we pre present with phlegm and heat. Yellow, phlegm, panting, rapid breathing, heat. Coughing with foul smelling pus or blood in the phlegm. That's due to the heat. So that's from the, the smelling. The patient also may have yellow urine, that's also from heat. High grade fever, that's because of the heat. So as you can see here, this syndrome is an excess syndrome, excessive heat. So that's the key manifestations there. Also, when you, when you study these manifestations, you can refer to the analysis in the textbooks that's how to anal analyze these symptoms. And, the, and from the analysis, you, you will have a better understanding. Also, you, you, will have a, you will have a more impression, a better impression on the basic theory, how to apply the basic theory to, uh, to analyze these manifestations. Cold flame. The flame can be hot, the flame heat, or can be cold. The cold flame, the patient also presents with flame, so also have panting, coughing. Careful, that's the key point. Some of the symptoms that's only coughing, some with panting and coughing. You can use either because these manifestations can happen in all patients. You can't say that a cold flame affecting the lung will present with panting and coughing. A flame heat only presents as coughing, no panting. So that will depend on the individuals. It will vary with um, different patients. So this manifestation will include the lungs problem, also the cold, coldness, cold lumps, the phlegm problem, phlegm, chest tightness. The tongue is pale with white, greasy coating. The greasy is the tongue, is the phlegm, the white is the cold, white coating. So that's the, the flame, the cold flame. Can a uh, flame heat affecting the lung has wheezing sounds in the throat? It's also possible. So these are not the key identified points or the key differentiation. Distinguish points 
when you study these symptoms, when you study these different symptoms, you need to find the most typical manifestations of this symptom, of this syndrome, such as cold phlegm, phlegm and cold, cold limbs, cold intolerance, where is the phlegm, greasy coating, slippery coating, cough with phlegm, perfumes phlegm. So that's the most typical manifestations of this of this syndrome and these typical manifestations can help you to distinguish with others then dampness affecting the lung as you can see from these three these three syndromes all related to the, to the flame the reason why they have flame heat called flame or flame dampness that's because we want to emphasize the other parts, the flat dampness. Let's only tell you this. There, there's extra dampness in the body. And no matter flat heat, cold flame, or flat dampness, what they are going to affect is the dispersing and descending function of the lung qi. The dispersing and descending function of the lung qi will present in coughing and panting. That's because the coughing and panting is the manifestation of the disorder of lung qi. Cough with white, sticky, perfumed phlegm. That's the, from the dampness. What's the difference between the dampness, phlegm dampness, and the phlegm coldness? Or cold phlegm. As you can see from the manifestations, they are quite similar. They have a white greasy coating. They have a white phlegm. The only difference is, is that the patient feel cold or not. Cold lumps or cold intolerance as from the cold syndrome. So that's how to identify different symptoms and syndromes.